Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. It's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, Luke Bryan, Jeff Hiller, and music from Glorilla with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! It's tax day today, or as um, Donald Trump and Amazon would call it, April Fool's Day today. It's, and we're the fools. Did you know tax day is the number one day on which American couples have sex? Even before Valentine's Day. I made that up, but we can make it true. <laughs> By the way, tonight I'm claiming you all as dependents. Um, that's right. If children, as you know, not only are children our future, on tax day, each one of our precious little treasures are worth a tax credit of $2,000. So tonight, we pay tribute to our beloved little write-offs, and we ask the question that we ask every April, are they worth it? In the cereal. Whose idea was this? Southwest Airlines had another snafu today. Hundreds of Southwest flights were grounded due to what the FAA described as equipment issues. Oh, you experienced that? The Southwest, I tell you, they spend so much time on the ground, they're basically a railroad now. <laughs> and a social media post, the company said, we apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, but that's what you get for flying Southwest, bitch. <laughs> and then um, Spirit Airlines joined in. They replied, they tweeted, ha, 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 ha. But no company in America had a worse day than Fox News today. That big $1.6 billion defamation trial was supposed to get going today, but it ended when Fox settled for $787.5 million. It's gonna take a lot of reverse mortgage ads to pay that one off. That's <laughs> Immediately after the settlement, Fox issued a statement that said, this settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. <laughs> They're already lying in their statement about lying. It's shameless. And while obviously Fox is the main villain here, I also want to say nice going to Dominion. We naively thought this was about making Fox News take responsibility for uh, destroying their reputation because that's what they told us it was about. But no, they took the money instead, which means the liars who knowingly misled their oatmeal brain viewers and seriously damaged our democracy don't have to say anything about it at all. No apologies, no testimony. They can go right back to sodomizing the country <laughs> while uh, Dominion and their lawyers go shopping for yachts, I guess. Good work, Dominion. Thank you very much. I hope you can sail far enough away uh, to get uh, the next time Donald Trump loses the vote in Booger County, USA, you won't be around to <laughs> experience it. And by the way, if you want to congratulate Fox business anchor Maria Bartiromo for providing Dominion with so much evidence, Fox had to cough up almost a billion dollars. You can find her at the Planet Hollywood in Times Square where she'll be waiting tables for the whole rest of her life. <laughs> this was a, um, the settlement was a bigly disappointment for Donald Trump who really worked that all caps button hard telling Fox not to settle. But he's moved on. The Great Pumpkin posted on Instagram <laughs> for the first time since the day before the insurrection to unveil a second round of Trump NFTs and what a round this is. They've got Elvis <laughs> Presley. 
playing guitar while on a motorcycle. For the QAnuts, there's a powerful image of Trump looking on while a flaming lion uh, kills the world, I guess. I don't know. Trump posted a, a message on Instagram, too. He wrote, I hope everyone notices, I'm sure the fake news won't, that I'm leaving the price of the trading cards the same as last time, even though they are selling for many times more. It's called the market and sold out almost immediately because I want my fans and supporters to make money and have fun doing it. I could have raised the price much higher, and I believe it still would have sold well with a lot more money coming to me, but I didn't choose to do so. I will be given no nice guy credit. <laughs> you know what, though? He's right. He, what a nice guy. He's only charging $100 for this JPEG of him stealing the Liberty Bell. <laughs> smuggling in in a Mar-a-Lago. He's only charging $100 for this image of him as king, uh, <laughs> making the little heart sign. And by the way, if you buy three kings and line them up, you spell out the name of his favorite organization. <laughs> Here's, this is, weirdly, this is my favorite one. This is not one of Trump barbecuing, which is something he has never, ever done for anyone. <laughs> next to a giant dog, and here he is as a rare golden butt plug. People love to collect baseball cards, but why settle for that when you can collect the greatest trading card in history, like Trump digital trading cards? We didn't raise the price despite the incredible fast sellout last time. It's so easy to buy, just need an email address and your credit card or crypto. If you want to own a piece of history, go to collecttrumpcards.com. Uh, I think I know what Eric and Don Jr. are getting for Christmas this year. <laughs> By the way, if you buy 47 cards, you get to have dinner with Donald at Mar-a-Lago. Or you could become a rapper who's into Hitler and he'll invite you for free, but um, <laughs> if you're not, just buy the cards. And I would like to just take a moment out to imagine what Fox News and Newsmax would say if Barack Obama unleashed a line of digital trading cards featuring him as a king you can have dinner with. I and I love that this is the depiction of how that dinner's gonna go. <laughs> Two fawning stock photo models <laughs> admiring a suspiciously slender Donald Trump <laughs> while eating a bowl of roses. I don't know. The reality is he's gonna wave to 500 people from across the room while they wolf down plates of string beans and Salisbury steak. But think about how crazy this is. If you buy his digital trading cards, you could have dinner with him at his house. This is not what a president does for money. This is what one of the stars of Goonies does for money <laughs> after a serious drug problem, okay? What an embarrassing thing to do. Literally the day after his financial disclosure, showed these NFTs. The first batch fell like $96 million short of what he thought they were gonna be worth. The fact of the matter is, there's only one authentic Trump collectible, and it's not a trading card. It's HPV, okay? <laughs> and, so, and it's free, by the way. Trump did get his nft -ny little hands on an endorsement from a congressman named Greg Stube of Florida, who really lit up the night with this big announcement on Newsmax last night. First, thing, first though, you're here to make an announcement tonight. What is that? Yeah, and Rob, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this on your show. And I'm happy and honored to endorse Donald J. Trump uh, for president. Hey, hang on a second. Did he just say Donald J. Trump? Donald J. Trump. <laughs> yes, he did. He sure did. That's uh, what you call a Freudian slip. <laughs> but in the future, endorsements like that will mean nothing because no one will know what anyone said for real because of AI, which is all of a sudden everywhere. I bought a painting this week and I thought it was a steal. Paid a lot of money. In retrospect, I'm not sure it's authentic. It's the Mona Lisa, <laughs> the scream, American Gothic, and the dogs playing poker. Probably AI, right? This AI, I feel like someone has discovered a time machine that could potentially rearrange everything and we're all like, oh, cool, great. <laughs> you find out where I left my keys, let me know, okay? My friend, and I don't wanna mention this guy's name because he's a news person, but um, it's Jake Tapper from CNN. <laughs> Jake Tapper has been making these AI paintings of me on his telephone and texting them to me night and day. He comes, he'll write a description like he wrote, what might it look like if Jimmy Kimmel serenaded a dolphin? And the AI made this of me <laughs> serenading a dolphin or something. And there's a whole storyline he came up with. He wrote, and then Jimmy attempts to woo the dolphin and her jealous squid boyfriend objects. <laughs> oh no, things aren't looking good, Jimmy. Really worried about you, man. But what's this? Your charm is winning out. 
Success. You made the dolphin your lover. Congratulations. The end. That's the end of the story. In other words, this AI has already commandeered the brain of Jake Tapper of CNN, who, by the way, has elevated to a higher plane, according to this AI he made of himself. AI has even infiltrated music now. There's a new song, I don't know if you heard about it, by Drake and The Weeknd, that wasn't made by Drake or The Weeknd. It was created by artificial intelligence. And the scariest part is, a Drake um, AI sounds almost as sad as the real Drake. Who heard AI Drake? <laughs> The song, which is called Heart on My Sleeve, was created by a producer. This guy, in the picture, he's got a white sheet over his head. Nobody knows who he is. One thing is for sure, his mom is missing a pair of sunglasses. But other than that, <laughs> it's the ghost of dead music. I, anyone can make a song now. In fact, we use some technological wizardry to make music magic tonight. In New York, it was, it's the end of an era on Broadway. The Phantom of the Opera played its final performance on Sunday night. Guillermo, you've been pretty broken up about this, yeah, right? Yeah, Jimmy. I, I walked in your dressing room, you were singing. What was the song you were singing? Oh, my God. The I, music I, of the... Oh, yeah, all of them, really, right? Yeah, most of them, yeah. Most of them, yeah. anyway. <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera was the longest-running show in the history of Broadway. 35 years, almost 14,000 performances. Everyone in New York has either seen or acted in it. It's the law and order of musicals. <laughs> And it also happens to be, Phantom, one of Donald Trump's very favorites. The song Music of the Night, it's a regular on his Mar-a-Lago playlist. He's DJs at Mar-a-Lago, and he puts the song on almost every week. So we thought, with the help of some cutting-edge technology, who better to pay tribute to a New York spectacle that rose to popularity during the 80s than another New York spectacle that rose to popularity during the 80s? And, um, well, here it is. Night. Time sharpens height. Each sensation, right? I don't know. You have to tell us about that. Darkness stirs and wakes imagination. At a long time ago, I was told to have a great ear for music. Let me dream. Begin. Let your darker side give in to the power of the music that I write. Bing, bing, bong, bong. The power of the music of the night. Have you ever tried opera? <laughs> there he is. Wow. Very sad.